Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Julia, I'm a mindset coach and in today's video I'm going to talk about obsession. Whether you're obsessed with a goal that you want to achieve or whether you're obsessed with a person that you want to be with or a dream that you want to manifest. Let's dive deeply into where obsession comes from and what you can and have to do if you want to release obsession, if you want to break free from this unhealthy pattern. Before I jump into it, if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one support on your journey, then you can check out the link in the box below. I'm gonna link my services there. I'm also going to release a money mindset meditation course very, very soon. So stay tuned for that as well, because it's going to be amazing. All right, now let's talk about obsession. So when you're in a state where you're obsessing about something or someone, obviously you are completely overthinking, your mind is running almost on autopilot and it's driving you crazy. It's only focused on one thing that you are thinking about and that you desperately want to have. Yeah, so obsession is correlating with this feeling of neediness and of desperation. You are constantly, constantly, constantly thinking about something in a, or someone in a very nervous way and you're feeling like it's gonna be very, very difficult for you to achieve what you wanna achieve or to be with the person that you want to be with. You feel like it's almost impossible or you're unworthy of that and you feel anxious about losing a person or losing something, an opportunity that you want in your life. So that's the state. I think you can already feel like how this feels. It's a very contracted and unpleasant state. It's a state that is coming from lack. Yeah, it's definitely a lack experience. Now let's dive into where this is coming from. Why is this happening? Why is this experience arising within you? So as I already said, when you're obsessing about something or someone, you're in the state of lack. And basically what this means, it tells you something about how you see yourself in relation to this other thing, to this goal, to this dream that you're having, or to this person that you want to be with or that you're admiring. You're seeing yourself as less than whatever it is that you desire and you're putting your desire, your person or your goal or your dream on a pedestal. You are making yourself smaller and you're making them bigger. Yeah, that's the basic dynamic that is going on. Your own self-image is identified with not having what you want. You're identified with the experience of lack. Now that can have different reasons. Either you think you're innately unworthy because of some hurt in the past, or you tell yourself the story that for some reason what you want is not possible, or it's just hard to achieve, or for some reason it's not going to happen, or you're going to lose it again. Something happened in your past that made, made you believe that this is how things are going to turn out for you in the circumstances that you're in. So there is some reasoning behind the story that you're telling yourself and it makes you feel like it's a fact that you are not going to have your desire or you need to fight hard for it and you need to be desperate for it because it's so much more special than you, which is obviously not the truth. Now that we have talked a little bit about why it is that this pattern is coming up for you. Yeah, it's your self-image, your self in relationship to whatever it is that you want. Let's dive into how can you actually release that because this is obviously not a very happy place to be in. And there are different ways to approach it and I want to start with the most important and the healthiest one to do. In order for you to be able to let go of obsession and to later on also manifest your desire, you first need to put your attention back on yourself and work on your self-worth, your self-love and on your healing. You need to make yourself more important. You need to prioritize yourself. Like honestly ask yourself that question, why the heck are you putting something or someone else on a pedestal when you are making yourself smaller? You need to realize that this is super mean and if you would do that to another person they would probably feel really bad or feel really pissed or it would definitely not be a nice thing to do. So why would you do it with yourself? 
you need to really, and I'm, I'm repeating myself here because this is so important, you need to realize that this is not okay. This behavior towards yourself is not okay. It's not okay. And if you are, you know, if you grew up experiencing um, hurt or if you are having low self-esteem, then this can feel normal to you. It can feel normal to you to play small. It can feel normal to you to make other people or other things in your life more important than you. But this is not the truth. This is not the truth of who you are. You are worthy. You are loved. You are love. You are consciousness. You are so deserving. And you need to remember that. You need to work on yourself and prioritize yourself and be with yourself and change the way that you treat yourself. This is the most important step to do. The absolutely most important. Take your attention of whatever it is that you want and put it back on yourself. Nurture yourself. Deal with your inner wounds. Deal with your inner child that might be in pain. And in order to give that a little more structure, I want to you know, quickly explore what are the different things that you could be looking out for and you could be addressing. So first of all, if you're having low self-esteem, you might want to take a look at your inner wounding. Yeah, maybe your inner child is in pain, your wounded self, so to speak, you're, you're experiencing some inner wounds from the past and you need to start to dive into looking at them and dive into healing them. Yeah, so take a look at the parts of yourself that are in pain. Another aspect of self love is simply first increasing your self love, increasing your sense of worthiness simply by doing things that make you feel happy, simply by uh, spending time with yourself in a, in a way that makes you feel worthy, that makes you feel seen, maybe saying affirmations and I am statements that are making you feel loved and you're working on self love in a way that feels a little easier. In the end, you will need to address those inner wounds as well if you have them. Uh, because it's just very important to be able to hold yourself and to deeply heal because otherwise these inner wounds will come back out and you will again try to fulfill yourself by you know seeking external validation which is not healthy in the long run it doesn't work anyway so better address it within yourself get yourself a coach or a therapist or a really 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 great book or course or at least watch a bunch of YouTube videos that can help you with that for at the very, very least, because you need to start to be there for yourself, so show up for yourself. And if you have any questions about what it is that you might need to be working on, you can drop your questions down below because obviously um, without knowing you, I can't really tell what it is that you need, despite that self-love is always very helpful and that inner child healing is something that everybody should be doing. I, I don't know a person that doesn't need or didn't benefit from inner child work. So um, definitely let me know in the comments below what questions you have so I can help you in more details. And I'm also going to link you to my emotional healing playlist where I talk about a variety of um, inner healing techniques and inner healing topics that could be very, very helpful to help you address whatever it is that is feeling in pain for you right now. All right, so we have talked about inner healing, we've talked about self-love. Now, this is these topics are very, very important in order for you to stop obsessing over anything or anyone outside of yourself and to stop obsessing in general. Once you start to access your heart energy and once you start opening your heart you're gonna feel this very grounding beautiful loving energy that is slowing you down and is healing you and this is going to help you stop so stop obsessing so i really really want you to hear this if you want to stop obsessing you need to practice self-love take your attention away from anything or anyone that you felt obsessed about and start seeing yourself differently in general and in relationship to whatever it is that you were obsessing about. And then it's probably best for a while to let go of that desire, not in a sense that you think that you can't have it or that you won't have it because you will um, if it's a healthy desire, but it can be very, very good to let go of it for a while because it will help you to really focus on yourself and make yourself a priority and also 
show yourself on a subconscious level that I am more important than whatever it is that I want out there. And now I'm gonna tell you the last step, but I really, really need you to do self-love first when you're obsessing because otherwise this step will not help you. So only do this when you're stable, when you're feeling worthy and when you're feeling that you are in a good place and that you have really, you have put yourself first, you have made that desire less important. This step is you can start manifesting that desire from the stable place by realizing that this desire is not separate from you. That's why manifestation works. It's because we are all one. Everything is one. And you are the creator of your reality and you are shaping your outer reality. You are shaping your external reality with your beliefs and with your energy and with the way you see the world. Now, this means you need to start to connect with the version of yourself that already experienced the fulfillment of your desire. The reality where your goal is already achieved, where what you want is already here, where you are already with that person. Because in that reality, you're not obsessing over it. You're happy, you're free, you're feeling relaxed, you're feeling abundant. You need to connect to that reality and to that version of yourself. Who is that person? Who is that person who is worthy of the desire? Who is that person who easily receives what they want? Who is that person that can easily materialize their desires? Who is that person that is already with that significant other person that you want to be with or, or whatever it is that you're looking to manifest? There is a version of you who already has what it is that you desire and you need to start to connect to that version and you need to start to embody that version. And when you are that version of yourself, when you start to think from that, when you start to feel from that version of yourself and when you are starting to embody that reality, that's when your desire is going to materialize very, very, very effortlessly. But as I said, always before you do that, before you do that, come back to yourself prioritize yourself, work on your self-esteem, work on your self-worth to show yourself that you do not need anything outside of yourself. And from there, it's going to be very, very easy for you to assume that your desire is already fulfilled and that you can easily manifest it and easily experience it in your reality. Basically, what you're doing is you're creating your reality inside out and you're amplifying your inner experience. You are shaping your inner experience and you're starting to live in the end. And then your outer reality, your external reality is going to reflect that back to you. All right. Thank you so much for being here. I love talking about this topic. Put your questions in the comments below. And again, reach out to me if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one support. And now I wish you a beautiful rest of your day. Bye-bye.